Blog number 61, Short Offering Buffet. Besides being really a cool name for a band, Short Offering Buffet is just an, another way for me to say leftover night. This is a direct reference to a past blog, number 43, which was titled Leftovers No Matter How They're Reheated. It is time again for me to pull out those little bits and pieces of writings that I've had sitting on the shelf over the last year or so, and hopefully you will find something that I present here that you will like. But it's leftover night, and if not, then we always have frozen pizza available. Number one, losing my, um, dealing with my, uh, oh, you get the point. At a tender and yet slightly riddled and marbled with fat age of 50, I am now mature enough to admit to you that I have never had what most people would refer to as an impressively commanding handle on short-term memory. Oh sure, I can easily remember all the lyrics to songs and the band members that played and sang those songs when I was a kid. But ask me what I had for dinner last night? Uh, give me a minute. Oh, shoot, I should know this one. Five minutes later and after consulting with the wife. Oh, yeah, now I remember. And then she reminds me that I was the one who made dinner. See what I mean? Not very impressive. But this pales in comparison to the short-term memory that my body seems to be having lately. I was thinking about this in the shower the other morning when my legs started to wobble, the moment that my eyes were closed so that I could rinse out my hair. And I distinctly remember looking down at them and thinking, Really, guys? Really? I mean, we just went through this exact routine yesterday. Side note, you may be tempted to be impressed by my powers of recall and memory of the events in the shower, but remember, they happened just minutes ago, and basically, I had to write them down as soon as I got out of the shower and I was dry, lest I forget. No, really, I'm serious. Don't laugh. I would have waited until I was completely done with my shower, and I would have probably, at that point, remembered that I'd been thinking about something a few moments ago, and then I would have convinced myself that I'd been thinking about flooring, popular flooring options for our house. Hey, I've done it before. Anyway, my point is that lately my body seems to be having a lapse in recall. My fingers will, on one day, remember how to tie a shoe or a grip a fork, but the next day, it feels a lot like the first time all over again. That 70s hit feels like the first time by Foreigner. That could become my new taxi and theme song. Number two, it all comes tumbling down. If I could have gotten a heads up or received a clue when I was three or four years old that one day I would have a taxi I could have begun to lay the groundwork for a spectacular payoff later. Now just imagine with me for a moment. I could have talked my father into letting me use his five acres of land, and every week I could have set up 10,000 dominoes in anticipation for that day that I would stumble into them and set a world record. I mean, 10,000 a week? Until I was 38 years old? That's, uh, let's see. There are 48 weeks in the year, 16 tablespoons in a cup. Uh, well, that's a lot. And I would have been a champion domino type person. Or whatever you call a person whose major achievement was setting up dominoes all his life. Of course, had I actually done this, I would have needed a cleanup crew to pick up all the fallen tiles. I mean, I set it all up pre-ataxia, and I can't be expected to do all the cleanup post-ataxia. 
as I can't really bend over and pick up small things without doing a nosedive or packing a suitcase in anticipation of an extended trip. Besides, I did the hard part by stumbling, stumbling into the stack and getting the ball rolling or dominoes toppling, as it were. But as close to reality as this little amusing is, it didn't happen. Hey, it could have, but it didn't. However, in the present, I do think of dominoes every time I reach up into a cupboard, attempt to put something away, or reach into the refrigerator. Hey, I'm not making this up when I say that sometimes what should have taken me seconds now takes me minutes because of all the things that tumble out of the cupboard or that fall off the counter when I reach for something else. When our kids were small, Melissa and I built up a rather large collection of plastic cups because plastic is very kid-friendly as opposed to glass. We still, have, we still have some of those cups, and I'm glad that we do, because basically I've discovered that these are also a taxi friendly. Just think of what would happen if dominoes were glass. They would literally be one-use toys. So thanks to the spectacular invention that plastic cups are, the domino-style action continues. Number three. And speaking of perspective, one of my goals throughout the day is to have the parents of control. By the way, I believe that the perspective we have for ourselves is a natural part of the goals that we set for ourselves. And this current writing is meant to be a direct extension of my last blog concerning goals. So when I'm in public and it appears as if I'm intoxicated, I would rather people imagine that there be maybe another reason for my unsteady gait rather than that of, of alcohol. Something simple, you know, say like that I'm really only practicing at being publicly intoxicated because I landed a part in a local theater as a town drunk and I really want to nail it. Although... That seems to be rather specific, and I can't imagine where one would have gotten the idea in the first place. There's got to be an obvious answer, you know, like maybe I told them or something simple like that. But I don't know, I, I don't really recall. I have a bad short-term memory, remember? Well, maybe you don't, I don't know. But the point is that the perspective you have of yourself cannot be based on other people's preconceived notions. Now, I'm not referring to family, friends, and loved ones who can speak positively into our lives. We need to be an encouragement for each other, and we need to speak truth in each other's lives. The support of others can be very helpful, and in a lot of ways make all the difference. But what I am saying is that the perspectives or the false conclusions that people jump to that don't know us or understand the handicap that affects us are usually not very helpful at all. In fact, these can hurt or cause frustration and anger, which is what typically happens. Our perspective needs to be based on who we are, and our daily goals need to reflect this. It is like I stated in my former blog that I believe we need to accept our limitations, give ourselves permission to be who we are without our, with our disability, and to set realistic goals for ourselves that are based on an accurate perspective of who we are. Having a positive perspective rather than a negative one is possible within this disease. Now that I have shared my thoughts on goals and perspectives, I would like to move on to the subject that I call number four, peeking through the willows. As a person who has found himself suddenly staring into the reality of a diagnosis of spinal cerebellar ataxia, like many of you, I felt alone and now somewhat separated. But also, like many of you, I discovered after a time 
that this was not a true perspective. The truth was that there was a support group that I could join. There were thousands of people worldwide that I could reach out to through social media and connect with. They were from all walks of life at different places and stages as they dealt with their handicap and they brought much needed understanding, friend, friendship, and support into my life. They began to teach me by the examples in their own lives what it is like to live moment by moment with a handicap. Why do I call this peeking through the willows? It is because I strongly believe that as we peek into another person's life, we can find the strength within our own handicap to maintain a positive perspective of who we are and select, select correct and helpful goals for ourselves. Well, my friends, I truly hope that there was something presented here that you found palatable. And I am sending all of you thoughts of strength and praying that you have a great day.